This is a very deep and horrible sin among the human race from jump from Eve, Adam, all the way up to us. It's unbelief. It's unbelief in God. Some people don't even believe that there's a God. It's just darkness and, and, and ignorance. They don't realize it, um, that there is a God. And then people act like there's not a God, even though they believe in a God, but they act like there isn't. It's like they're living actions of, of atheists who don't believe in God. Unbelief is charging God with lying. <laughs> don't want to do that. God has given us his word. God has given us promises and everything. And God has sent Jesus and he died. And people don't believe in, in him. People don't believe is his love and his care. Sure, there's suffering and evil, but there's reasons for all of it. First of all, it wasn't intended that way. It was us and our, um, our sin that brought all that on. It was paradise at one time. It was, it was good, um, it says over and over in Genesis 1. All right, so unbelief is a really strong thing. And um, now, if you remember, we just had a tremendous story of Jairus um, who said, come and heal my daughter. If you'll do that, you know, you'll, she'll live like from her sickness. That was major faith. Or the, um, the woman with the issue of blood, great faith was shown in that. If I just touch his clothing right there, the garment, the bottom of his garden garment, I'll be healed. But his own town, no, really super sad. So he, he leaves, uh, he goes um, from Gadarene or Gadara or Gerasenes and all. Uh, he, he actually, maybe uh, he was, uh, oh no, actually he went to Capernaum here for the Jairus daughter and all. And then, and then he comes down here and he comes to his own hometown, Nazareth. And it seems to be, um, not very many people, probably 175 to 200 people in his village. So everyone knew each other. And they, they watched this Jesus raise up. Like uh, they watched him as a boy. And this is what it says. Jesus left there. This is probably Capernaum or Capernaum. And went to his hometown, his own country, his own area right there. Most likely it was definitely an answer. So I'm sure it was. A company, well, it so, almost says it here accompanied by his disciples. So he's got his team there and they went to Nazareth. And this is a beginning, by the way, this, this chapter goes into another tour, probably third one. It seems that there were three big tours of Galilee. Like, and by the way, this is Galilee for those of you who don't know. If you can see these dots here, this is Galilee. So that whole area. And so he went to all those villages um, you know, all those towns and he was, you know, and he had his disciples and this is, um, well, I, either the second or third tour, it, it, I don't know. Anyway, it's one of those. It seems like there's three big ones, like went all over the place three times. Jesus left there and went to his hometown. It begins maybe in Nazareth. Maybe he went there first or maybe he was on the way as he was preaching to some of the other towns and all. And when the Sabbath came, it was Saturday, Friday night. You know, it says Friday night to Saturday. He began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him, the people who were here, heard, hearing him, they were shocked at his teaching. I don't think also, if you read this carefully, that it was necessarily what he was saying, although that was definitely part of it. It's like, what? This is profound. This is amazing, amazing teachings. I love to hear all those. And he says, um, and they, but the thing is, uh, they were more thinking, where did he get it? Not what he was saying. It's not the what, but how or where did he get this knowledge? Um, it says, where did this man get these things? Like, how did he get the power to teach so much? He's above all the teachers that we've ever heard of. He was blowing them away. And they heard, spread, word had spread everywhere about his mighty deeds, his miracles, the works that he was doing. So it says, where did this man get these things? They asked, what's this wisdom that has been given him? Like, how did he, how did he get it? And what is this? That he does these miracles. Like he, they knew that he was doing miracles. He did not do big time miracles in his own home city. Why? Well, we'll find out as we go through this. Is he unbelief? He couldn't even do it. Mark says he couldn't do it. Um, he just didn't, what? He didn't have the ability? Of course he did. Jesus Christ could heal at a moment's notice because of the power of God and his walking with God, the Father so closely. 
once his wisdom has been given him that he does these miracles, isn't this the carpenter? Here's their problem. They, they couldn't see the supernatural, the divine, the hidden uh, divine nature. They couldn't see God behind the skin. See, they, they, they knew he was a boy. He was a human. He, he fell. He, uh, he did all the things that we do. He walked. He ate. He had got hungry. He slept. God doesn't sleep, the Bible says in Psalm 121, I think it is. You know, what is this? So they just couldn't see the forest of the trees. They couldn't see the uh, the person the divine person if they were sensitive of god sensitive to god and if they were to step back and say is this is this really the messiah they would have required like ask about this is this really uh, some divine person a prophet they didn't even believe he was a prophet come from god why could they couldn't see it because they they were too familiar with jesus so it says, what's his wisdom that has been given him that he does, this, does uh, even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? Or we could, um, it also could be read, isn't this the son of a carpenter? Like some say, car this is, by the way, Mark is the only one that actually brings this out big time. Um, isn't this Mary's son? You know, so if you kind of take those words and put it a different way, like Greek, in the Greek, isn't this the son of a carpenter? Could have been that, like Joseph was a carpenter. By the way, Joseph is gone in all these stories and it's strongly believed and i believe too that he had died like where is joseph in these stories the last story of jesus do you remember was in matthew chapter 2 and it was um the birth of jesus and all and that he raised him up to about two years old and then he went ahead and passed away the bible doesn't say that but it's pretty obvious he's gone he's not in the picture anymore it says it's a carpenter a carpenter, a simple carpenter, a person who is who works well. There's different opinions, but wood, maybe stone, a stone cutter. Um, one of the uh, of like two or three hundred years later, people who who were in that early time period said that he that, that they found out that he he must have he made yokes and plows. A yoke is on a two animals to connect them there, big heavy uh, wooden uh, thing. And then, uh, and then a plow to plow the ground. So that's at least some things that we pre that they think that he actually did. Anyway, it says, isn't this a carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son? And the brother of, and it actually names the brothers in this passage, is James, Joses, Judas, and Simon. Uh, we'll talk about them in the next probably video or so we're coming up here, who they are more. And then it says, aren't his sisters here with us? The women, the, his sisters were there. Now he's about 30, they probably already were married, they probably had husbands. How many sisters? The Bible doesn't say, at least two. So Jesus had six siblings. Some people think they were cousins and all, but very clearly, if you take the Bible as it says, and the word that was used is mainly used as brothers and sisters. And also in Matthew it says, he, Jesus was the firstborn, okay? Anyway, so these are his stepbrothers and sisters. And it says, aren't his sisters here with us? So there's at least six siblings he had. And they took offense at him. We'll get into that later. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, I, I'm going to end with this. Just what was it about Jesus that caused them not to see who he really was? If they were just step back and they were to think about it and say, wow, who is he? And pray. And But they were closed-minded. They were hard. By the way, in my opinion, this is, and I'm not sure, the second time after Jesus started doing all this stuff, um, the second time that he, uh, he ministered um, at Nazareth. He came to his town earlier, probably a year, year and a half earlier. And that's when he started his ministry and they got mad and they were gonna throw him off the cliff, if you remember that story. Anyway, here it goes. So here's, here's the thing about that I like first to discuss about Jesus, um, that the extraordinary, extraordinary, like Jesus was way beyond just human and all. The extraordinary was hidden in the ordinary. See, this is what God did. He was humble and he came down and became flesh and he didn't glow like a halo or something shining or something. He looked just like everyone else, like a human being. He was a human. He was actually 100% man. So um, here it is. He was human. The, it, it, see, the uh, extraordinary hidden in the ordinary. Like it, he was hidden behind the skin. He was in the tent. He was in the tabernacle of the human body. Um, but they couldn't see it. So he was human, which is ordinary. He was human. He was flesh. He was a boy and he became a man. So 
they, you know, I don't know what they thought. You know, they, the Messiah was going to be like an angel type person. I don't think so. But just, just realize that he was just like you and me. He really tasted, in a sense, he experienced, in a sense, definitely experienced being human. So he was human. That's ordinary. Second, he was in a very small village, like I said, probably about 175, 200 people. And, he, and it was an out-of-the-way village. It was secluded. It was separated. It was obscure. It was just a small little village over there. It wasn't popular at all. You know, Nathaniel um, in, in the book of John says, can anything good come out of Nazareth when he heard about Jesus? So like, what's so special about Nazareth? Not much of anything. Of course, he made it special because he, he grew up there. All right, so we have a human. He was, it was a flat, he was made of flesh. He was a boy man. They couldn't see that he was more than that. Um, he came from a small village not a big one, not like Jerusalem or Capernaum, which was far more uh, busy and a lot more people out of the way, kind of, it was kind of close to a road there, but it wasn't, it was just a small little obscure little village. Um, he lived sort of like a simple life, kind of quiet. You know, he, it was simple. It wasn't like in Jerusalem, which is totally different and all. It was just a nice little country village. I love that. Look what Jesus chose. Look what God chose to put him in. Just a small little village. And it was, he lived a quiet life. I think he was, um, he acted, now his character was totally different in my opinion. That was, yeah, like he was definitely different. But in other ways, he wasn't different. Just like one of the boys, you know, hanging out there. So he went through the Jewish uh, boys stuff. Like they were, they were in their schooling uh, in the synagogue at the first century started at that time. Um, he did, they taught him mainly at home. But here he is, you know, he lived a little, just a quiet little background life. Um, it, he was a common, hardworking, he had a common, hardworking job. You know, so uh, how common was it? Well, you had to have a lot of things built, like tables and chairs and doors and plows and um, yokes and all that. So, you know, there were the carpenter. Now, maybe he was the only carpenter in that town, but very popular, you know, it was absolutely, it was one of the businesses. His dad, Yosef, his stepdad, God was his dad, uh, was, the, uh, was a carpenter. He was an apprentice. And I'm almost, almost sorry, so whatever the father did, the son learned from him and became that in his trade. If you were a potter or you were a tax collector or various things. So here it is. Um, he, he just worked a manual job with his own hands, you know, kind of a rough tumble job, like really building things. So it's a common, hardworking job. Don't you love that about the Lord? Just an ordinary, you know, man and a boy and a job. He blended into, uh, I, meant, I should have said into one word, society, except for his character. But the point is, he's kind of blended in. He was just a typical, regular, run-of-the-mill kid you know, as he was growing up, regular teenager. So he relates to what it's like, you know, to be a kid, a child, all the ages. He went through every stage of the age, you know, so it's very cool. And the next thing I would like to suggest is he lived in a humble home. It was not a rich home. The Bible was pretty clear about that with, uh, with them becoming kind of poor. And why? Because if you, I don't know if you know this, but in Luke, um, it says, in chapter two, that when they gave the offering at his birth and all that, that it was a poor man's offering. It was like a turtle dove or pigeon or something, which in the book of Leviticus, it was poor, poor man. He, they didn't have a lot of money. He was a carpenter, he got by, but it's just a humble home. Do you see it? Can you picture it? And so that kind of hindered them. They were right there and it's like, oh, I don't see him. Where did he get this knowledge? They know he didn't go to Jerusalem and get great training. And they've been to Jerusalem, they've heard some of the training, and, but this guy was way, way better, extraordinary teachings. And they couldn't see where they got it. So maybe they, they thought it was one of two sources, spiritual stuff, because this is supernatural teaching. It was way beyond the normal thing that they're used to. It was extraordinary. And um, either it was of, he was of God and they couldn't see that. They couldn't see that God chose this humble carpenter, poor, you know, in our village. Who are we? Nazar uh, Nathaniel, remember, said, can anything good out of coming to that? Like, what is this town? And so 
they just couldn't see it and they were blinded to it unbelief if they were just sensitive to god and they prayed and all i think they would have definitely seen it you know and all this time i think they were calmer they didn't throw him on the, like take him out and gnash their teeth and want to throw him off the cliff they got mad in that passage of what he did what he said oh they were mad but in this case um they were calmer and maybe they realized that people his popularity spread and they heard about his miracles and all and they realize that, you know, they can't kill him or something. They would, Israel would be mad. So they calmed down on this and they, they just couldn't understand where he got that. They couldn't believe that God really did do this. Oh, if they could be a believing um, generation, if you could be a believing generation and you trust God that he, he's there and he wants to teach you and he sent Jesus for you and all that. Let us be believers and not unbelievers. We can learn a lot from this, this group right here. I just don't want to be that, uh, like that blinded. Um, I want to believe in Jesus and I want to trust him. They didn't. Um, so, all right. Thank you very much. We'll continue. God bless you.